Hey everybody, welcome back to the Highland Fox. Today we're going to talk about the 2022 Australian Grand Prix. Here are our four biggest takeaways from that race. All right, so it was exciting to see Australia back this year. Yeah. And they made some changes, so I thought it was a pretty good race, lots of overtakes. Yep. So, More than normal. Yep. Yeah. Um, so first up, McLaren. Um, yeah. First two races, not competitive. Ricardo didn't even finish um, Saudi. And then yeah. this time, finishing 5-6. Um, yeah. That's a heck of an improvement from them. So I, so is that legit? Is McLaren back? Are they back to 2021 form? Or was that just like a, a good race for them? I don't know. I feel like every time I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is them. I'm off. So I I, I don't know. Like that's why we're on YouTube and not drivers. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I, they looked good. They did look good. I, I think I want them back, mm -hmm. but I don't know. It, one race is not as one data point. Yeah, that, that's not a trend yet. But they were looking good. Yeah. So, so we'll see. Yeah. Competing against Mercedes in the race, and you know. Red Bull in the points, kind of. Mm -hmm. They're still kind of away, but I think they could probably take fourth in the standings. Yeah, and once again, like this is only the third race, so yeah. who knows? Everyone's got a lot of updates coming. But I'm maybe I'm biased, but like I want them to be back. It's so yeah. fun. Like Ricardo, when he is up there, he's just a blast, and it was nice to see him do well in his home race. So yeah, that's like one of the first, I think it's the best, like one of the best he's ever done in his home race, which was exciting. Yay, go Danny so. Rick. Yeah, we'll see. Third race of the season. McLaren's had a roller coaster of a season, but hopefully this proves like a trend for them to improve. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. So our second big takeaway from this race, the tire whisperer. Perez. No. Albon. What? Did you right? see? Like everyone thinks it's Perez. Whenever you hear like, oh, my tires are mm -hmm. fine, right? It's always Perez. But Albon went the entire race, 57 laps without a pit stop. Mm-hmm. He stopped on the last lap before Leclerc crossed, crossed yeah. to make sure that he was able to use two compounds. Or I don't even know what the penalty is. I've never, I've never actually seen it. We've never looked it up, but, but yeah, we have a video somewhere. I'll link it somewhere there or down <laughs> below um, about our tires and like the tire strategies and all those kind of things. Um, but yeah, if you you have to pit because you have to use two different types of compounds on dry weather, and he was only used the hards the whole race, and then. Decided on the last I, lap I, to pit. I really thought he was going to get driver of the day. I don't know how he didn't. Because he was just like so understated, just doing his thing. Like even at the end, like, you know, pulling away from Ocon and Ocon had newer tires. I was like this. He had like, the oldest tires you could possibly have and was still had good I pace. was so impressed. So impressed yeah. with him. He got our vote for driver of the day. Yeah. Yeah. So. But yeah, so now Perez has some competition. Uh, <laughs> who's the better tire manager now? Oh, this is exciting. Yeah, I very, know. very cool stuff. This is the this is the stuff we have to talk about. Not mm. the title fight, not no. Mercedes mm. or Red Bull. We need to talk about tire management. Tire management. It is sexy news. <laughs> so yeah, go check out that video wherever I post it. Um, <laughs> after this one, you can check you can check it out. But very impressed. Yeah. So go out, Albon. Fifty seven laps on one compound. Yeah. That's crazy. Perez, Craziness. he's coming for you. <laughs> so we're going to interrupt real quick because we have a sponsor today. This was drawn for us for the Australian Grand Prix by her eight-year-old niece. She drew us a koala bear in honor of the race. How cool is that? Very nice. Yeah. So make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so we can tell her how much you guys supported us and how her, her artwork helped the channel. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so for our third point, Aston Martin. What is happening with Aston Martin? I don't even know how to lead into this. I, I feel like I could do an entire video on this team. <laughs> the struggles of uh, this team? I don't know. I, I feel like they were my hit or miss. I was like, they yeah. were going to be either dead last or up there fighting. So we obviously know which one they are. Um, so Vettel, this was his first his first race this year. He had like, I don't know, 26 laps going into this race Yeah, today. like no chance to practice. His practice was terrible. His qual was blah. Um, and then he crashed, so yeah. I, I, just not good. He had more time on the scooter than he had <laughs> in his car. I'm not convinced the scooter wasn't faster. I know that should have got been driver of the day, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't. I don't know. I, they're just. And then Stroll doesn't know how to use his mirrors. I'm not sure his car has mirrors. That was painful to watch. You were like, in crawl you... and in the race and yeah, in practice. He's, he's just out there like. I don't know, listen to Britney Spears on the radio, having a joyride. I'm like, dude, look in a mirror. Yeah. Uh, this is the second race in a row because he did the same thing to yeah. Albon in Saudi. 
But so, does either driver come back? I know you've been on the Stroll's retiring bandwagon for a while. I just, he, I feel like he's just like out there for, I mean, obviously for fun, but like out there for just like, hmm, what else is there to do like today? A hobby. Yeah. I don't know. There's just so many other drivers that would kill to be in his spot. Yeah. So I just, I think it kind of just sucks that like I'm getting this vibe of him just kind of being like, eh, it's, yeah, it's fun. And then yeah. Vettel, I. I don't want him to ever leave, you know? Yeah. So I, I think it's just so painful to watch him be in a car that's just not delivering. Four-time for world champion. Yeah. And he has a non-competitive car. He's racing for mm-hmm. 18th. Like, mm-hmm. that's not why he came back. No. He, he's, he's starting to seem a little bored, too. Mm-hmm. Again, like the scooter thing, we joke about it, but that's something you do when you're like, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. Like, I don't want Vettel to leave, but the mm-hmm. longer the season goes on, the less competitive Aston gets... I don't know if he sticks around. Mm-hmm. He's got nothing else to prove. No, but I'm, I hate to see him go out that way. Yeah. But, I mean, even the Aston Martin safety car, people were like, yo, this is so slow. Hurry <laughs> up. So they're That's just, true. on all accounts, just struggling. come on, Aston. Like, yeah. Ugh. No. But, so, speaking of reliability, yep. I think we're going to lead into our fourth point, which I know we discussed in our last video, but I think it... We have to discuss it again. Whenever there's massive regulation changes, reliability is going to be an issue. And Mm -hmm. we were surprised we didn't see it in the the practices in Barcelona and Bahrain. But it is starting to show its worth right now. Yeah. So Mercedes has the slower car than Red Bull and Ferrari. Oh, by far. Like a second slower. However, because their car is actually going across the finish line, they're second in um, points. And the driver. Russell's second in the driver's standing. So, Red Bull, get it together. Like, they, you have a bullet of a car, but when you're like 50 percent, Yeah. They've only finished 50% of the races because they've DNF'd three times mm-hmm. and they've had six opportunities. So, yeah. I, I mean, once again, still early, but how long are we going to say, oh, it's early, it's early, until it's like, yeah. oh, okay. And when they're different problems, I don't know if that's better or worse, mm-hmm. but Mercedes is like, finishing you know a minute behind the leaders but it's still third place yeah so it's like it doesn't matter once they figure their car out they're gonna be back to normal Mm -hmm. and they and then red bull is gonna eventually figure their car out hope like maybe Mm -hmm. but i mean even it the reliability bug even hit ferrari yeah carlos sanz was having issues with his steering wheel and that caused him to spin out you know, so Ferrari only had one finisher. Red Bull only had one finisher. And Mercedes is just... Yeah, so if Mercedes just <laughs> is consistently, yeah. like, top mediocre team, then they're going to... Yeah. Then they'll take it, you know? I, I feel like there was a story on, the, like, the tortoise and the hare. Like, they may not be the fastest car, but they will... <laughs> but they will, they will chug they, along they, yeah. and get it. Yeah. So, uh, it will, we'll yeah. see. I, I, I hate seeing Max out like that. Yeah. But... He's a good driver. Comment down below. Do you think... How this plays out. Does Red Bull figure it out? Does Mercedes figure it out? You mm-hmm. know, all those kind of yeah. things. But I guess we're going to add a bonus topic here that we didn't even mention. Oh, yeah. Uh, Leclerc won by 20 seconds. Had a grand slam. Led every lap. Was rarely on screen because there was nothing to watch. So. Go Leclerc. Good yeah. for you. Good that for was... you, Leclerc. Yep. Yeah. All right. And that's all. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.